Today is Wednesday, June 11, 19, uh, 2003, and uh, this is the beginning of an interview with Ms. Dottie Tracy. Uh, Ms. Tracy was with the American Red Cross during World War II, and she was stationed in England and in Germany. Uh, this interview is being conducted at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Frederick Wallace. I am the interviewer. Ms. Tracy, we want you to tell your story in your own words. We want you to begin at the very beginning of your entry into the Red Cross, give us a reason why you entered, and just take us step by step from the date of your entry to the date that you were released from the Red Cross. So Ms. Tracy, this is your story. Would you begin, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity to be able to uh, share my experiences because I think my appreciation for the efforts of the uh, men and women in the armed forces is uh, very important. First of all, I was a volunteer with the American Red Cross in Philadelphia. We had what we called um, small clubs most for enlisted men. and. Um, uh, this was really very interesting because I found that no matter where the GIs came from, they all uh, appreciated music. And so we um, played the piano, we sang, we uh, danced, we did lots of different things. And um, I think that this was part of my um, vocation to begin to uh, think about a little more uh, cooperation with the American Red Cross and I do remember they would call on us to go the Philadelphia had a large a hospital uh, for the military and I remember going down one time and I will never forget this uh, the woman who was running the uh, whole affair uh, stood up in the front of the bus that was taking us down to the hospital and she said this is a very serious opportunity. You are going to talk to these men who have been severely wounded and many of them uh, want you to maybe write a letter to their mothers or their wives or sweethearts or something but and she looked at us all very carefully and she said I want you all to realize that the smell of that hospital is something unbelievable. Do you know this was a very, very good advice. I will never forget walking in there and seeing so many of these men severely wounded and lying on their beds and so on and trying to talk to them and so on. But this was a very good opportunity for um, us to see the results of, of warfare. And um, so this was one of the reasons that when the opportunity came to uh, go overseas with the Red Cross, I immediately applied. And uh, so they gave me a, a quite a, a very serious interview, let me tell you, and you had to be very healthy and, and you had to be very careful psychologically too. And um, then I was uh, then uh, told that I would be going to, uh, to England. We, t uh, we trained in Washington, and I do want this point to be made. Do you know, when I was training in Washington at the end of 44, beginning of 45, my maiden name was Shay, S-H-E-A, and guess who I sat next to? A woman whose last name was Sherman, S-H-E-R-M-A-N. Of course, we were all seated alphabetically. Do you know that she and I, she was from California, she and I stayed good friends until two years ago when she passed away. That shows you how important the companionship with, a with American Red Cross was. Uh, really, we shared so many things together. She was much better than I am. She could talk French and Spanish and everything, and I couldn't. But anyway, she was a really a very, very good friend, and she never married. And I remember when my husband died, she came out several months later, and was just a tremendous help to me. So Red Cross was not only just for the Army, but it also extended for years afterwards. And many of the men, incidentally, that I met in the Red Cross still keep in touch, believe it or not. So it was really, really very great. Donnie, anyway, can I take you back for a moment? Pardon? Yes. Uh, can I take you back? 
uh, give us the dates that yeah, uh, you right. first got um, involved with the Red Cross. In May 1945, I arrived, I arrived in England. But and when you were in Philadelphia, you say? What, what was the date there? Pardon? You were in Philadelphia? Yeah, well, we were uh, took our training in Washington. Okay, what date was that? I'm not real sure, but uh, let me see. It was early in the year. We took, uh, I think it was a, a couple of months training that we had to have, and then they decided who would go to the Pacific and who would go to England and so on, and so uh, I was one of the ones, and believe me, the ship that we went over on was, I will never forget how many of us were lined up in bunks all the way up mm -hmm. and so on, and it was, uh, we were a little nervous about going over, but anyway, when uh, I was uh, then sent to a, um, a place up in uh, the um, Midlands of, of England, and it was really, it was, um, it was in a place called Ogburn St. George, and uh, this was a camp for men who were having psychological difficulties. The woman that I was replacing had had a complete nervous breakdown. It was a pretty difficult assignment. But I do remember that how I decided that what the men needed to do was maybe get away from the camp for a little bit and meet some plain ordinary English people. So I took them down to Marlborough where they were uh, putting thatch on a roof. And uh, the, the Marlborough people were so nice to the GIs and they stood around and talked and so on. And I will never forget the uh, colonel said to me, Dottie, how come you thought of doing that, of taking them out of the camp? And I said, I just thought it would be good for them. And do you know he was the colonel that wrote me a commendation because he appreciated the fact that, I, and I, incidentally, we also took them down to um, uh, Stone, Stonehenge, and I will never forget the GIs. You know, they were always teasing me because I had an Irish grandfather and so on. And I was explaining to them about Stonehenge and I leaned against one of the stones and I got a, a real shock and they all laughed, you know, said, it's the Irish inner, that's what it is. But do you know, a couple of years ago, they discovered in Stonehenge there is a radioactive stream underneath the rocks and that's what gave me the shock, not the fact that I was Irish and, and also Irish and German. But anyway, uh, the club closed and uh, I was sent to a a place called Tidworth in England. This was a camp where the uh, the men were now being uh, sent to the Pacific. This was a difficult assignment. Do you know that we had six and seven suicides a day because the men had been through combat in Europe and did not want to go to the Pacific? Oh, this was very difficult. But one of the things that I was very grateful for is my ability to play the piano and sing. This was a big help to the, you didn't have to be professional, let me tell you. But anyway, this was a big help to the GIs and they could come in and, and sort of take part and so on. And, you know, we did lots of different things. Well, then in, uh, uh, when that was over, I remember uh, the GIs laughing because I was very good at ping pong. <laughs> so, you see, Red Cross people had to be in help in a great many ways. But um, uh, then in September, I was transferred, uh, I was told I was going to go to Germany. Well, my grandmother was born in Bavaria, Germany, in southern Germany. And I thought, oh, good, maybe I'll be sent down to Bavaria and I'll see where grandma came from. Guess where the Red Cross sent me? Bremen, Germany, up on the North Sea. <laughs> this was uh, a really a very, very good assignment. The Red Cross Club was uh, the place where the GIs came to leave their camp and we were given the Symphony Hall of Bremen for our Red Cross Club. And you will all enjoy this. The first day I walked in, I to make sort of what was the, you know, the survey of the whole thing as we were going to do. There was a German band there and they were, had uh, received uh, some of the hit kits from the uh, 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 army like this, and they were attempting to play Don't Fence Me In. And uh, I, um, they were playing it like it was a German folk song. 
And I stood there and I said, no, this is correct, this is correct. And, and I ran up to the piano and I started playing, oh, give me land, lots of land, you know. And I, all of a sudden, I, at about three or four minutes, I stopped and looked around. The entire German staff, the entire club was all sitting, oh, listening to, this is real American jazz, you know. <laughs> so, but, um, one of the other things that I was able to do at the Bremen um, Club was to talk to the uh, director of the symphony, the conductor, and I said, I would like to have a couple of concerts for the GIs. He said, no, no, uh, it's, it's a GI not like a symphonic music. I said, oh, I'm sure we can find some GIs who like symphonic. And we did, and these were very successful, and he was so grateful for this because he, he felt that uh, this also, you know, instructed him that uh, the Americans just didn't like just jazz, you know. And um, then when I was getting ready to go home, he, uh, they were, of course, the GIs were starting to leave, you know, and so on, and so they were going to close the club. He made an announcement at the symphonic concert and said he understood that Dorothy Shea, who has been running the Red Cross Club, will be leaving to go back home. And so for her, we wish to dedicate this next piece. And this was Vorjak's Going Home. And do you know, last year, they played Vorjak's Going Home at the Atlanta Symphony, and I cried, I cried. All I could do was remember when I was leaving Germany. But it was a, this was really a great experience. Now, the other thing that I have to admit is that this in Bremen was where I met my husband, who was with the 29th Division. And this is how we met. The, the, I talk, of course talked to the GIs all the time, and they were, a lot of them were going over to Berlin, you know, and so on, and taking trips around Germany. And so they were telling me, they said, oh, Dottie, wow, you ought to see what we can get for cigarettes. Man, all these Germans want cigarettes. And so what I did, was that I posted a little poster on the bulletin board and said how much they could get for cigarettes in Berlin. The next thing I knew was the next day or two days later, this officer came to me and he said, are you Dorothy Shea here at the Red Cross Club? And I said, yes, Lieutenant, why? He said, I'm gonna put you in jail. I said, what do you mean? He said, you are uh, advocating the black market by putting that sign up on your bulletin board. And I said, oh, I never thought of that. That was how I met my future husband. And <laughs> believe it or not, this was, uh, he was a, a, a veteran and he had had a, a really very, he had been badly wounded and so on. and. Uh, uh, it was a wonderful experience, though. We had a very successful marriage. We came home and lived in Ohio. He went to Ohio State on the GI Bill. And uh, it was, uh, that was one thing, you know, that I have to admit, that the American Red Cross, I was able to meet my husband. Dolly, let me take you back to uh, your arrival in your first base in England. Where did you and the other Red Cross workers live? What were your quarters like? And compare <laughs> that to your quarters in Germany. Uh, well, in uh, at Auburn St. George, the, since this was a base for the GIs, you know, it was a, we really we had one room and very few facilities and everything. It was very rugged living, and uh, my club director though was just simply wonderful to help me get adjusted to that. And then when down at Tidworth, since this was a big uh, English cavalry camp, we had a little better of living facilities. But when I went to Germany, what we did was that we lived in a lovely private home. And the people, the Germans were really, they were very kind to us. I do remember though, you know, having uh, experienced my grandmother's German, trying to talk German to them, and they said, nein, nein, ist nicht recht. Uh, you, uh, your Deutsche is a peasant. Deutsche, because of course they spoke high German and I was speaking low German. But um, 
uh, one of the uh, women was very grateful to me for what I was doing and gave me a, a lovely little uh, glass container that I still have. And I mean, we really made very good contact with the with the Germans. And uh, thank goodness I could speak even a little bit of the German, and it was a big help. Did you have to buy your own food? No, no, room? we were the Red Cross supplied that. And uh, you, you did know, not I have really, to Really, I mean, the, the army did because we were serving the army. It was in the Red Cross. Did you eat in the army mess halls? Or how did you get your food? Did you eat in the mess hall? In no, the no, no, halls? no. In Germany, we uh, ate uh, in, in the private home. But in, uh, in England, we ate in the regular mess halls. And what is your experience <laughs> of the food in the mess hall? Uh, well, I lost weight. <laughs> But it wasn't bad, you know, but uh, I, I do, I think one of the things that I had a special love for was the infantry, because they really uh, sympathized with us, they did everything they possibly could, because I'll never forget when a busload of the Air Force came in, and we were serving Cokes and coffee, you know, with the Red Cross Club, and this Air Force guy came up and says, come on, come on, service, service, service. And I'll never forget, I went over and I said, now you just listen here. We are serving all the American uh, GIs and there is no reason for you to demand service. And I'll never forget, he turned to his friends and he looked at them and he said, hey, isn't it great to be given hell in good American English? <laughs> so, I mean, one never lost one's own personality and I mean, you just did what you thought was correct, you know. <laughs> You said that you met your husband. What attracted you to him? Well, now this I will just have to share. One of the things that one of the first dates we had was the great big 29th Division um, Army uh, banquet. And one of the uh, Red, Cross, Red Cross women came to me. She said, Dottie, you're going to have to uh, have a date for this. Uh, they want all the American women to have dates. And I said, well, I'll tell you the kind of date I want. I'm not going with any officer who's living with a German woman. And she said, Dottie, this is going to make it awfully hard. <laughs> and I said, I am not going with anybody living with a German woman. And that was how come Jack Tracy was selected, because he was not living with a German woman. <laughs> and so that was how we met. And when you met him, uh, did you, was he kind? Was it his kindness yes, that attracted you? Yes, he was. You? He was a good dancer. He was, um, he was very interesting because uh, he was from a small town in Ohio and I was from a big city in Philadelphia, like Philadelphia. And our backgrounds were completely different. And, uh, but I immediately recognized what a fine, upstanding, person he was, and he was a wonderful husband and father. He went to Ohio State on the GI Bill, and I'll never forget, he was uh, graduating, he had his degree in business, and we had two babies, and he said, I would like to go to law school. Now this was a man whose parents had never graduated from grammar school, and I looked him up and down and I said, Okay, he said, do you think you can manage? And I said, sure I can. Do you know he graduated from law school first in his class with a JD? And I've just been so proud of him and the, all the kids, so now they say, oh, boy, we wish Daddy hadn't done so well. He sure set a, a standard for us to try to live up to, Mother. But he was a wonderful husband and father. I've been very fortunate. Did you marry overseas? Or no, 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 back? no. We got married back home. When you were overseas, were you in the? Uh, were you near any combat areas? Well, uh, we always went through the combat areas. Now Bremen had not been bombed very much. Bremerhaven had, and um, but uh, Bremen was really not bad. But uh, so many. What I remember most about England was the dreadful, dreadful uh, uh, wreckages of the towns and cities and so on. And also in walking in London and, and having the cornices drop off, you know, oh, it was really, 
it was a real experience. You really realized what these people had had gone through, and some of the, especially the English friends that I met, uh, had very much. They had nervous breakdowns, you know, and so on. And if there was a loud noise, I can still remember some of the people that worked in the Red Cross Club. If there was a loud noise, they would uh, just just go into a frenzy, and uh, uh, so that there was, you know, they had suffered a great deal from this. And how long were you and your husband together over in Europe before you returned to the United States? Well, he uh, he was stationed he was stationed back home. He was sent back home before I came home, and um, uh, he because he wanted to start school then at, at Ohio State in the GI Bill. And incidentally, I have to say this with my economics background, but the statistics show that the GI Bill had the greatest economic positive economic effect on the United States of any program that was ever done. Yes, that is true. That's what I've heard, yes. Well, take us then from uh, after he returned to the United States, how much longer did you remain in Europe before you joined him? Well, I, I uh, didn't get back home until uh, September. And then, believe it or not, in 10 days we got married. So. <laughs> Of course, the, the big, you know, thrust was, I mean, he was in school and we had to, you know, so we lived in, a, in an apartment in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and I really had a great uh, affection for Columbus, Ohio. They handled the GIs beautifully at Ohio State, and I, I loved Ohio. Was it a result of your marriage that you left the Red Cross? Oh yes, yeah. Well, no. Red Cross was closing the clubs and so on, and the, so they were relieving us, and um, uh, so it was um, uh, sort of mutual. <laughs> but no. But I was, you know, I, uh, left the Red Cross because they were closing the clubs. I mean, there, you know, there was no need for mm -hmm. those anymore. Were there any other occurrences that uh, stand out in your memory that you would like to um, share with us? Oh, now let me see. <laughs> um, well, I think that... Um, I, I really... Um, uh, some of the things that we were able to do for the GIs were really, you know, really very uh, rewarding. I remember uh, some of the uh, enlisted men, you know, talking to me and so on, and I said, uh, we were discussing dates and times, and, and he said, uh, yeah, well, my birthday's coming up. And I said, well, gee, he said, oh, you're going to have a birthday. And I'll never forget his looking at me and saying, I've never had a birthday party. Well, who do you think organized the birthday party for him? And do you know, that we kept it a secret, of course, because we, we told its other friends, you know, now don't tell them, don't tell them we're going to do this and everything. And we got a big birthday cake and so on. And he broke down when we brought him in and sang happy birthday and everything. But those are the rewarding things that you can do, you know, to, uh, because they were away from home and family and so on. And to be able to help them out was really uh, very, very rewarding. And, uh, and the, the GIs were just, uh, uh, I will never forget it. I was uh, down on my hands and knees arranging some music and so on. And this GI came in and looked at me very carefully and he said, you know, Daddy, it's a good thing you're a Catholic because you can work on your hands and knees like that because you're used to being on your knees. <laughs> I laughed. But uh, really they appreciated, they so much appreciated the music and, and the way that, uh, um, I, I would just, you know, be walking down and see a GI and slip my hands, you know, arm through his and say, come on, let's walk together, you know, and so it was really uh, very companionable and very rewarding. So the GIs were really glad to see the Red Cross workers at their camps. Boy, they sure were. A lot of them said, we didn't know Red Cross was going to do this, you know, but they, we had what we called, uh, like the, uh, in Germany, we called the club the At Ease Club. Now, this was for enlisted men only, and uh, I do remember having a dance, and some of the uh, black GIs, and I danced with them, and we sort of had a little bit of problem, but <laughs> I went to the microphone, and I said, I'm going to dance with anybody I want to. <laughs> 
So at least we were able to solve that and bring in Germany. <laughs> if you were to speak to younger people today, what would you tell them about uh, your experience in World War II? What would you like for them to remember? Well, I think that the most important thing to realize is that we are all Americans together. And we need to establish this kind of, although I was, you know, brought up in a big city and everything, and uh, it was so much fun because I was able to talk to the GIs who came from farm countries because my father had been born in upstate New York on a farm. And uh, for the summer, we would, uh, Daddy insisted that we have an experience like that out of the city. And I will never forget one of the GIs saying, uh, it said, well, oh, what kind of a farm do you have? And he said, a cattle farm. And I said, well, uh, did you have beef or dairy cattle? He said, you're from a city. How do you know the difference? And I said, don't worry. I know the difference. So it was a help to have had the kind of family I had that, uh, you know, it gave me a variety of experiences. It was really, and mother, of course, was, you know, insisted on the music, and that was a great help. And you would tell the younger people today to take advantage of all of the uh, yeah. opportunities they have? Well, by all means, because it's nice to meet people from different backgrounds and different cultures and so on. And I, I felt bad that I couldn't speak, you know, uh, the foreign language. It's such a help now. I have two sons now who are both fluent in Spanish, and this makes such a difference. And uh, I, I think to have uh, expressed this kind of a feeling that we are all people together, no matter what our background and experience, I think is very important. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, just that I'm grateful for the experience that I had and for the opportunity to be able to share this. Well, we certainly thank you, Dottie, for sharing your experiences with you. And we hope you have a much uh, much success in the future and uh, the rest of your life. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> yes, indeed.